Hello and welcome to our first lesson in our course on material selection using Ashby charts. In today's lesson, we're going to focus on visualizing material properties. When I'm designing something, whether it be the next advancement in spacecraft or a dinner plate that won't break when I drop it on the floor, I need to choose the optimal material for the job. This means comparing multiple materials with one another and choosing the best one based on the information at hand. Now, how do engineers and designers go about doing this? Well, often material data is presented in handbooks and tables, such as the one that you can see here. Now, this is a lot of information to sift through. If I'm trying to compare two materials together and they're not next to each other in this table, I'm probably gonna have to export this data to some sort of spreadsheet software in order to begin to make sense of it. Also, the data is usually presented by material family, such as polymer shown here. This can be frustrating if I'm considering multiple material families for my design. What if I want to know which of these materials has the highest combination of properties, like specific stiffness, which is Young's modulus divided by density? I'm going to have to calculate that ratio for every single value in this table. What if there was a better way to do this? A more visual way? When material data is displayed in sheets and tables, we're simply seeing numbers and words. When choosing materials, we need to find the meaning within these numbers. A way to give these numbers meaning is by plotting the data in a material property chart, such as the bar chart that you can see here on the screen. Here, I've plotted Young's modulus on the y-axis, and I've split the x-axis based on material family. Now, I can easily see the differences between my different material families, and I can see the differences between the materials that are within a family. Now, the reason you're seeing these bars here is because no material has just one value for a material property. A material property data has a range, which encompasses various things like different qualities and types. No material is perfect after all. If we compare our bar chart to a similar table of data, we can begin to see how the chart adds clarity. All of the information here is the same. You can absolutely get the same results by staring at this table, but the chart allows characteristics and trends to be seen more easily and more quickly. One thing to note here, which will be important throughout this course and later courses on material selection, is this scale used in these plots. If we plot our materials data with a linear scale, shown here on the left, it's difficult to distinguish data for small values, such as those for our polymers. In this plot, they all seem to have the same value for Young's modulus. But that can't be correct, can it? If we change to a log scale, shown here on the right, the differences between property values and trends in the data are much easier to see. Looking at the trends for a single material property data is nice, but when I'm designing something, I'm often considering multiple material properties, not just one. We can compare our data for multiple material properties by plotting on both our X and our Y axis in what's called a bubble chart or an Ashby chart, shown here. Now my material families are represented by these larger envelopes, where individual materials are these circles and ovals. Here, I'm able to quickly see trends for material families across multiple properties. In my example here, I have Young's modulus on my y-axis and density on my x. So I'm able to see that foams, which are lightweight and have a low stiffness, so they're quite soft, can be found in the lower left-hand quadrant of my chart, whereas technical ceramics, which have both high density and high stiffness, are in my upper right-hand quadrant. Again, I'm looking at these circles and ovals rather than dots because I'm plotting my range for these various material properties. And with that, we've come to the end of our lesson. We've shown that by plotting material data in both bar and bubble charts, we're able to improve our visualization and understanding of materials data. In our next lesson, we're going to show how these charts can be used to perform simple material selection. So stay tuned. 
and join us as we see how these charts can help make the difficult process of material selection a little bit easier. My name is Caitlin Tyler. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you in the next one.